like to share a word for you today in the book of Psalms, chapter 91. It says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will deliver you with His feathers. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. Amen? We serve a mighty God. We're not to worry about anything. When we do, he says, pray about everything. Tell me what you need and thank me for what I've done. That's what he says. Let's keep worshiping him. I feel his presence. I don't know about you. Amen.
sacrifice this morning. Just begin to give God some praise. Glorify him out of your mouth.
that this morning? Do you believe that he's alive? Oh, let's praise our, our living Savior. Let's celebrate that life today. Hallelujah. Oh, you are alive and alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Oh, you are worthy of all our praise. We magnify the name of Jesus. We make you bigger, Father God. Oh, than everything, all the circumstances around us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that we serve a living Savior. The victory is in that life. He didn't stay dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to read to you out of Hebrews chapter 13, beginning with verse 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ, that resurrection power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him, all glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's all found in him. Everything that we need is in Him. If you really believe and have faith, the Bible says you can have anything that you say. We're going to prayer this morning. And God wants you to stand on His Word for your healing. He wants you to stand on His Word for your financial deliverance. He wants you to stand on his word to overcome sin. It's all our strength is in that resurrection power, that life-giving power of his word. He is the word. And the word is him. If you can find it in the Bible, you can stand on it and believe it, and it has to happen. God stands by his word. He's faithful. Jesus. The Holy Spirit just quickened in my heart. Don't be weary in well doing. Don't be discouraged in doing good. And the devil tries to lie to us and say, oh, your faith isn't working. Stop believing that. And I'm praying this morning that your faith will come alive, that your faith will be quickened in your heart, that that same resurrection power of Jesus that quickened faith, that quickened the body of Jesus would quicken faith in your heart this morning to believe him, that he can do the impossible. Don't be discouraged. Don't be weary. You're on the brink of of a miracle. You're right on the, the river's edge of standing in, stepping into all that God has for you. The devil knows it, so that's why he's trying to stop you. That's The devil knows it, that's why he's trying to discourage you. The devil knows the miracle is right around the corner. Don't give up. Persevere. Be strong in the faith. The Bible says, having done all, having done all that you know how to do, stand. Rise up, Christian. Rise up. For even now, your faith is even closer than it was yesterday. God is getting ready to explode this church. 
with miracles and healings and testimonies. We just need to be faithful. He's been faithful. He's been standing with you. And as we go to prayer this morning, I just want you to put your hand in the hand of the master. I want you to put your hand in Jesus. Hand. He wants to walk you through this. Everything inside of you wants to give up and sit down. And today, God wants you to stand. Stand up. Shake off discouragement. Shake off weariness. Shake off all the lies. Anything else the devil has tried to put in your way. And today, stand. Today, stand. If you're going to stand in faith, would you lift your hands with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, you are gracious and full of mercy and full of answers and everything that we need. We lift up our prayer to you this morning. We know, and I can feel in my spirit, we're right there. We're right there. I pray, Father God, that you would quicken in every heart. Encourage them. Strengthen their souls. Strengthen their spirit. Encourage them, Father God, to not give up. To not faint. Let them rise up with eagles' wings. Let them rise up. Let them walk and not grow weary. Let them run and not faint. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. As we stand in faith, you will be faithful to do all that you've promised to do. We stand on your promises of your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is truth. We thank you, Lord, that you cannot lie. And we thank you, Father God, that we're going to hold fast. We're going to stand and we're going to see the salvation, the completion of what you've done in us, what you're doing in our bodies, what you're doing in our finances. God, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't see it, we don't walk by what we feel or what we see, but we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, by your resurrection power, we release your Holy Spirit to move and do what we cannot do. And we call it done right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. If you believe that, will you put your hands together and celebrate with me? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's done. It's done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Welcome to New Beginnings. We're so glad you decided to join us this morning, whether you're, I was going to say old, but if you've attended here for a long time <laughs> or you're new, I want to welcome you. There is a, a visitor's card in the seat in front of you. If you're first time, would you fill that out and so we can have a record of your visit? Um, but would you take the time right now to tell somebody you look marvelous and shake a hand or two?
good to see you. Morning. Huh? Oh, did she? She keeps falling. Amen. God is good, church. You know, the spirit of God is so strong here. Even the people in the posters are falling down under the power. I don't know if you caught that over there. Thank you for getting that back up on the wall. Appreciate that. We need to invest in better tape or something. But uh, I am excited. Amen. And you're like, what is he excited about? I'm excited that Jesus is alive. Amen. I'm excited that we serve a risen Savior. I'm excited that, that the tomb is empty. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to date myself here, but how many remember Carmen? Anybody remember Carmen back in the day? He's still alive, by the way. He just got married. I found that out. I'm like, what? I, I didn't know he was, I, I, like, I thought he just, you know, went away somewhere and, you know, he's, he just got married. But he used to sing a song and he used to talk about, you know, about Friday, you know, good, um, what we call Good Friday. And, and I think if I remember correctly, the title of the song was Sunday's on the Way. And we talked about, you know, we talk about Good Friday, and, and it, was, it was a sad day, but I'm so glad that Sunday came. I'm so glad that Sunday came. I'm so glad that, that we don't have to live the way those disciples lived. That when, that when he died and gave his life, you know, he had told them over and over and over, this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen. But then when it happened, just can you imagine the feelings that they had? The guy we've been following, the guy we've been listening to, the guy that we saw with all this power, he's dead. And they put him in a tomb. And could you imagine what Friday night was like for them? Could you imagine what Saturday was like for them? Could you imagine what Sunday morning was like for them when they woke up and they're like, it's, it's real, he's, he's gone. But they didn't know that he really was gone. Because that Sunday morning when the ladies went back, when that, that, that third day when they went back to just, just you know, grieving and then ready to just you know, do the final preparations of the body. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. Amen. Great, Amen. Great we serve man. a risen Savior, and that's why I'm excited today. You know, sometimes we, we, we need stuff to get us excited. Oh, the church has this program, and the church is doing this, or the church is doing that, or this is going on, or that's going on. You know what? Sometimes we just need to get, get excited just because we know Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. My wife's excited. Amen. A couple of reminders before we go and uh, receive our offering this morning. If you're going again to the youth convention with us, um, we are excited again. Group, we, we may be adding another one today. Uh, but if you're going to youth convention and you have not received the consent form from me, please see me. Get that. We need that. Next Sunday, next Sunday morning, special guest speaker, uh, missionary Dwayne Danielson will be with us. I'm excited about Dwayne. I've known him for many years, excited about the ministry he's doing. You don't want to miss out and, on hearing what God is doing and hear the word as Dwayne preaches it. And then in the evening at 5 p.m., we're asking you to come on back. We're asking you, to, it's not, we don't normally have a Sunday night, but that Sunday night, next Sunday night, we're having our missions banquet. We're having the Teen Challenge Ladies Choir here. How many enjoyed yeah. the men? Yeah. The ladies have equally powerful testimonies, 5 o'clock, and the only thing we're asking you to bring is some food to share. It's our missions banquet, so we're asking everybody to prepare something, buy something, whatever you need to do, come on out. We're going to eat together, and we're going to hear about God, what God is doing in the life of the Teen Challenge ladies um, as well. We have prayer every Tuesday at 7 and Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m., ladies' Bible study Monday nights at 7, and then the last uh, two announcements is uh, 
refers to um, giving. If you give and you want credit, and these are the guys that, that count the offering after service asked me to share this. If you want credit, we ask if you're giving cash, please use an envelope and make sure your name is on the envelope. If you're giving with a check, if you're giving online, or if you don't care about receiving any kind of giving credit or information at the end of the year, that's fine. But if you want that, we need a name on an envelope. And then also, we want to remind you that we've got these invitations. Um, they're an Easter-themed invitation. Come alive. Look, we've still got a bunch up here. We need to be taking these and handing these out. I want these all gone before Easter. And so we got to do our job. It's an invitation theme, invi it's an invitation theme, but it just lets people know that there's a place in, in Jameson, Pennsylvania, where they can come and hear about a risen Savior. So I want to encourage you to take those. And then one last thing before we pray and, and receive um, our offering and worship God through our giving. Last week I introduced to you our resurrection offering. And on Easter Sunday, the people that call New Beginnings Church home, that's you and me. We want to receive a special resurrection offering. And what that means is we want to bring a special offering on Easter Sunday to celebrate that our Savior is alive. But also the reason is we've got some, some things we want to take care of. Some financial things we want to get settled so that we don't have to worry about them anymore. And so I want to encourage you to be in prayer over the next two weeks about what it is God wants to do through you. This is not, listen to me carefully... This is not you take your tithe for that week and just put it in a different envelope and turn it in. Right. The tithe is the tithe. We give that to God. This is a special offering that says, God, I believe in the power of resurrection. Yeah. And I believe that this church is res being resurrected to new life and to do new things. And so I want to encourage you to do that. And if you didn't already grab an envelope, they're in the lobby on your way out the door. They're the ones with the Swedish fish attached. And some people are like, what's up with the fish? The fish are there because, you know what, we just like to get stuff. But the fish are also there to remind us story after story in the Bible where God did a miracle surrounding yes. fish. Amen. Taxes need to be paid, and Jesus said what? Go fishing. Yep. You're going to catch a fish. You're going to find what you need in the mouth yep. of that fish. There was a bunch of hungry people out in the countryside. Jesus said, feed them. They said, we don't have anything. We just got a little boy's lunch, and that lunch consisted of fish. And Jesus took those fish from a little boy, and we know the story. He prayed, and they began to hand out all, those fi all that fish and all that bread, and everyone was filled to, to satisfaction. And then when they were done, you know what? There was nothing left. It was just enough, right? No. There was leftovers. There was extra. And then there was that other story in the Bible where the disciples are out fishing. And they've been fishing all night long. Anybody do something for hours and hours and hours and never just kind of have the success you were hoping for? And you just get to that point, you're like, you know what? I'm done. They were done. They were ready to come in and call it a night. And Jesus says, oh, no, you're not done. Go back. And they're like, Jesus, look, we're fishermen. We know what we're doing. You're a carpenter. You do your thing. We'll do our thing. The time for fishing is done. But... Because you said to do it, Jesus, we're going to listen. Amen. We're going to obey. Church, there's blessing in obedience. And the, the disciples, they set out, back out. You know, it's, it's not the right time to fish. And they push out off the shore, not too far. And Jesus not only says to fish, but he says, you know what? Drop the net on this side. And I shared this on Wednesday night with the Bible study. I shared it on yesterday with the men. It doesn't matter what side you drop a net on. The fish are the fish. If I drop a net on this side, does that mean the fish on this side of the boat won't? No, it doesn't matter. It was about obedience. Mm. And they dropped the net. And the Bible says they began to pull in a great catch of fish. A great catch of fish. So much so that the nets began to break. And so much so that what did they, what did they do next? The Bible says they called to the other boats and they said, come on, come on, come on. Church, when we are obedient to God, God blesses us and enables right. us to be a blessing to others. Right. And that's what I want and that's what I believe our church is destined to be, a blessing to others. So that's what the fish are all for. If you're thinking to some deep host, the fish, you know, what am I supposed to do? Like put the fish and pray over the fish. And No, it's just enjoy the fish. But think about all the miracles God does when people are obedient to him. That's the point. That's the point. And that Sunday, 
listen, that's Sunday. We're not going to say, okay, time for the resurrection offering. Get, your, get, get ready. Get your check. I want you to come ready. Amen. And we're going to have a receptacle. I don't know what it is. Maybe a tackle box. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what we're going to have. <laughs> we're going to have a receptacle up here on Sunday. And what I want you to do is I just want you to come in and just put it in there. Just come in and put it in. Because you know what? The people who are going to be visiting with us that day, family and friends, this isn't about them. I don't want them to feel like, oh, see, I told you, I go to church, and now they take an extra, they want extra money. This is about us. So I want you to walk in that Sunday ready, and it'll be up here, and you'll just drop it in, and we're going to believe God for miracles as we're obedient. Amen? Amen. 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 God is good, church. Who's excited about serving God? I, I, I just preached, and that's not even my sermon. But that's okay. You guys are ready in the back. We're going to pray, and we're going to receive. We're going to worship through our giving, the tithe, the offering. God meets, he meets us right where we're at. You know, we say, and Christy, I think Christy said something about magnifying God, making him bigger. And here's the crazy thing. As I was walking into service this morning, I found this lying out there. <laughs> I'm like, God, you're trying to tell me something? <laughs> um, I, this, I'm serious, this is not a prop. I didn't, this was laying out there on top of the water cooler. And then she said that, and I had, I'm like, all right, God, it's just trying to remind me, God, that I just need to make you bigger than anything that's going on in my life. Amen. Magnify the Lord, for he yes. is good. Amen? Yes. Let's pray. Father, we exalt you this morning. We magnify your name, Father. God, we are declaring, God, in word and in deed, Father, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. God, there is nothing that we're facing. There is nothing that we're currently dealing with. There's nothing, God, that's coming down the road at us, God, that is going to overwhelm us because, God, we are in your hands and we put our trust in you today. And, God, one of the ways we show our trust, God, is, God, by obeying. When you say to do something, it may not make sense. We may not agree. We may not get it, God, but you said do it and we obey. And God, your word says to bring the tithe and the offering. Bring the tithe into the storehouse and also the offering, God. Your word says, God, that when we tithe, God, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're starting something that, Lord, will cause the devourer to be rebuked. And when we bring the offering, God, we begin something, God, where, where the windows of heaven begin to be opened and blessing is poured out. So, God, as we worship, as we obey, as we give the tithe, as we bring the offering, be glorified, be honored, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 God bless you as you give. to shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome and powerful against us. 
And if our God is for us, then who can step or stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Our God is greater. God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Amen. Let's sing that again. Let's sing it again. Don't stop. Come on, let's sing it again. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, it's awesome. If you believe that our God is greater and stronger, let's give him one more hand this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that you are greater, that you are stronger. God, there is no new and improved. There is no better formula. There is nothing that's coming down the pipe, Lord God, that is going to supersede who you are and what you're capable of and how much you love us. God, we thank you today that we serve, again, the risen Savior, that we serve the great I Am. Thank you, Father, for your presence and what you're doing and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're going to let the kids go. Head on downstairs, kiddies. Amen. Make sure they all go. Yep, there they go. There they go. There they go. There they go. Man, I love kids. I love kids because I love kids because, you know, first of all, they're like, if, you've got, if, you're, if you're not around kids, you need to get around kids. Somehow, someway, get around kids. Because scripture tells us that we need to have faith as little children. You know, being around kids reminds you of what it means to just have faith, you know, that, that non-questioning faith. They've got energy. They've got exuberance. You know what? They love unconditionally. Kids are amazing. My message is not about kids. But I am thankful to be a part of a church that loves kids. And we're seeing the fruit. You know, we, again, when we first started here, you know, uh, we, had a, we had a little handful that would hear, a little handful there would come out. And, man, we're just seeing more and more kids. Those are lives that are being impacted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am grateful of that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, the title of my message today is Don't Stop. Don't Stop. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, but we're not singing that song this morning. You know what, there are, there's an old saying that says, all good things must come to an end. Anybody ever hear that saying? All good things must come to an end. We've heard it. You might have even used it. If not, you've certainly experienced it. How many of you have ever been on vacation? And you're coming down, you know, you get, you get on vacation, you go for a week, and it takes you the first three days just to kind of wind down from that, you know, from, that you started vacation. You just finally, you know, by day three, you're kind of like, okay, I can start to relax a little. And then you have like, like six hours in the middle where you like actually enjoy things. And then you start thinking, oh, it's coming to an end soon. Oh, only three more days. Only two more days. Only one more day. Sometimes, you know, we, we do that to ourselves. And it's terrible. But we do that. I know for kids, you know, many times, you know, the idea of all good things must come to an end. And that's something that kind of comes to their mind Sunday nights. You know, ever have a kid, you walk, your kids walk in from school on Friday afternoon, and they're like, it's Friday, and they walk in, and they throw their book bags wherever, and their coats wherever, and their clothes wherever, and you know, who gets Friday? And all of a sudden, Sunday afternoon hits, and reality starts to set in, and oftentimes, we're sucked into that reality, aren't we? 
because that's when Sunday afternoon they start to say, oh, by the way, I have a report due tomorrow. <laughs> oh, by the way, I need to this. Oh, by the way, I should have done that. And it's Sunday night, and they start getting, oh, it's Sunday night, it's school tomorrow, and I wish it would snow, and I wish it would this, and I wish the power would go out. And, you know, you know it's, 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 they, kids never get more spiritual than Sunday nights. And parents get even more spiritual because they start praying against that. God, no snow. God, no rain. God, no power outages. Because the kids don't want to go back. Sunday night has come, and they don't want that good thing known as the weekend to come to an end. School looms ahead. You know, and it's crazy, but I, re I remember a few years back in Delaware, we had one school year. You know, like kids get off for the normal snow days, right? Raise your hand if you're ever off school for a snow day. Growing up, whatever, you had a snow day. All right, we had snow days, okay? Anybody ever off school for loss of power? Like something happened, your school didn't have power. You know, weird things happen, right? I remember one year in Delaware, our kids had an earthquake day. Remember, anybody remember that a few years ago? There was like this freakish little earthquake that kind of hit like the northeast up here. And I, I felt like a bad dad after when I found out it was an earthquake because I was screaming at my kids because they were upstairs playing. And I thought they were getting especially rambunctious. And I yelled up, knock it off, you guys. What are you doing? You know, and, I, and then I realized it wasn't them because the whole house was shaking. <laughs> I apologized. I'm like, sorry. I'm like, man. And they, they got off school. We, there were kids that I knew that got off school for an earthquake day. And then there was, a, there was a hurricane, that same year, there was a hurricane day. They lost, they, they were off school because of a hurricane. And then another group of our kids had school closed because a, a freak tornado had rolled through the area and knocked out power. I'm like, man, we got some, some praying kids in this area. I'm like, what's next? Forest fire, meteor? I don't know. But man, it was crazy. And, and again, we come to that place where, you know, we, we, we don't want good things to end. And the Bible also th talks about things ending. It's not just vacations and, and days off and weekends, but other things come to an end. There was an end to creation, right? God, six days created, and then on the seventh day, God, you know, it is, it's good, it is good, it is good. And the seventh day, God rested. You know, that period of creation came to, came to an end. He rested. There was an end of, to the time of plenty and to the time of fa famine in the Egypt in Joseph's time, Right? Remember that? There was seven years of, of plenty and seven years of famine, but eventually what happened? That, even that came to an end. There was an end to the captivity of the nation of Israel. Remember, Jesus, God, God set six days created, and then he came to rest. Pharaoh, 14 years, plenty and, 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 and lacking. Captivity, 400 years in Egypt, and then that came to an end. With the birth of, the birth of Jesus, there was an end to the waiting of the Messiah. And that was a long wait, wasn't it? We go back to Genesis 1, where the story starts to unfold, and we find out that, 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 that God has this plan for salvation, for restoration. He says the Messiah's coming, and the people were waiting and waiting, and the Messiah finally came in the person of Jesus. And the sad thing is, church, and we need to pray for this, there are people that are still waiting and looking for the Messiah to come, and he has already arrived. That time came to an end. There was, a time, there was an end to Jesus' ministry on earth and life as a man. I mean, for as amazing as Jesus was, you know, his, his, his earthly ministry was about three years. About three years of active, ongoing ministry here on earth, and then that time came to an end. See, many things come to an end, and that, that can be a good thing, a relief. See, sometimes when something's ending, we're like, oh, man, I can't believe it's over. I feel like that when I go to amusement parks. Anybody, ever go, anybody here like amusement parks? Anybody here like coasters? I'm a coaster guy. I hate spinning things. But I love coasters. If there's, I, I think I've been on every major coaster within like a four-hour drive of here. I've been on King Daka. I've been on the volcano, King's Dominion. I've been on them all. I love them all. But the thing that always drives me nuts is you go and you wait in line for three days for a 30-second ride. Am I right? Especially when you pay those, those park entry fees. It's like I just paid $50 to stand in line. I don't do this for free at the bank. I'll come back later. But here, I just paid you to stand in line for three hours to get on a ride for 30 seconds. I wish they were longer. My body might not wish that. My body, you know, especially the first time I did King Daka. If you're King Daka, Six Flags, if anybody knows that, it kind of goes straight up like that. I don't know, I forget how many stories. 
and then it just goes over the top. And then you, I mean, it is like literally straight up, straight down. When you're going up, all you're staring at is sky. And when you're coming down, all you're staring at is ground. My body probably couldn't handle long, any more of that. But my wallet wanted a longer ride. But many things, again, they come to an end. A rough season in life. How many of you ever said, you know, thank God this, this is over? How many of you ever went through a tough season in life and you said, thank God this is over? For some of you, that's known as middle school. You're like, thank God middle school's over. Thank God high school's over. For some of you parents, it's like, you know what? Thank God for the terrible twos and the fact that they're done. Some of you are like, thank God the teenage years are, are, are settled. I don't have to deal with those anymore. There are times that we are, we're so thankful. Maybe there's a, a class that you had or a semester in school or in college where you're like, you know what? I'm so ready for this to be over with. An assignment at work even. You can't wait to just be done with it. You know, I'm, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do my best, but I can't wait for this to be done. You know what? And here's one I think all of us can agree with. You know what? And I'm thankful for this. Even winter will eventually come to an end. <laughs> even winter will event. This has been a whacked out year. Is it always like this around here? I'm from down south. Delaware. <laughs> you know, I'm from down south. And I joke with my wife all the time because she's, you know, we, we would, she would say, she would do something. She's like, well, you know, my family's southern. I'm like, your family's from Texas. My family's from Puerto Rico. We're more southern than you. But it's been a crazy winter. I mean, insane. And, and, and there's supposed to be something else coming this week. Another possible nor'easter. They're saying this one's huge. It's supposed it, it, it's going to be, it's, the, the storm is 1,200 miles long. They're saying this one storm could be covering everything from us to St. Louis. Listen, I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired of getting stuck in my driveway. Us, do you, draw, you shovel out like 12 feet. I can't do that. I got to wait till the plow trucks come to get me out. But I'm ready for it to be done. You know what? Praise God, eventually it will. And that's the reality, church. So many of these things that we get caught up in that overwhelm us, there is an ending to it. There's a day where that no longer is going to be a concern. And I want you to remember that because it's so easy in life to get overwhelmed by the stressors and the stresses of the moment. We've got to remember that our God is eternal and the issue is temporary. And, 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 and that's why, you know, the, the title of the message today was, um, don't stop. Don't say it, Tim. It's don't stop. It's don't stop. See, but there are also things that are enjoyable and we wish we would never end. Summer. Summer, right? Maybe not. Maybe if you're a parent, again, you want summer to end. But if you're a kid, Summer. I love summer. I love summer now, actually. Even having kids, I love summer. Because summer means I can throw them out of the house. If it's eight degrees out and I say, get out and don't come back till the street lights come on, that could be bad parenting. But in the summer, get out and don't come in. We're hungry. We'll put food out for you. Don't worry. We're thirsty. There's a hose. I love summer. Or maybe it's a visit with a family member or a friend that you haven't seen in a while and you wish, you know what, I, this, I wish this would never end. I wish this would never end. Remember the story of the Mount of Transfiguration, the disciples, they went up there, a couple of guys, you know, they go up, hike up this mountain with Jesus. And up there they get this glimpse of Jesus in his full glory. And what did they want? They didn't want it to end. They wanted to stay there. They wanted to stay there. And Jesus said, you know, it's all well and good, but you know what, you can't stay here. There's things to do. And I'm thankful that, you know what, for all the good things that God does, but you know what, I don't want to sit and, and, and settle just for today when I know God's got something more tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Here's a couple of other spiritual things that I'm glad don't run out or have an expiration date. I'm glad God's love never runs out and never stops. I'm glad that God's love never stops. I am glad that God's mercy doesn't end. I'm glad that I can, I, there's, I can, there's nothing I can do that God can't forgive me. The Bible says if, I'm, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I am thankful for that this morning. And if you're here this morning and you walk around with even an ounce of guilt for something you've done, I'm here to tell you today, you can walk out of here guilt-free because God says you can walk out of here forgiven. Amen? I'm glad God's forgiveness never runs out. 
I love that little story, you know, how many times should we forgive, you know, seven times? You know, they thought they were so spiritual, seven times. How about 70 times seven? 70 times seven. How about a whole lot? How about I'm so glad that God forgives us a whole lot? I'm glad that healing doesn't run out. You don't get so many tokens when you get saved and God says, okay, you know what, welcome to the family. Here's your tokens. Don't use them all up at once. I'm so glad that being a child of God means we have unlimited access to the very throne room of heaven. Because you know what, there's nothing more depressing than having a good time and running out of tokens. Ask me every time I go to Chuck E. Cheese with my kids and they come to me with an empty cup. Well, they don't do cups anymore. They do cards now. They're trying to hook the kids on credit cards. I'm convinced of it. You go to Chuck E. Cheese now, and it used to be you got a whole bunch of tokens in a cup, and the kid could just see. Now you go to Chuck E. Cheese, and the kid gets a little play credit card with all their, t their, all their tokens on the, cr on the little card. And they go to the machine, and they just go boop, and they play, and they go boop, and they play, and they go boop, and they play. And then eventually they go boop, and they don't play. And they come to you, and they say, fill it up again. <laughs> I'm thankful that God never runs out. I'm thankful that God, the joy of God, the peace of God never runs out. Now listen, church, there's some, thing, some other things we can establish on a scriptural foundation that should never run out. If you have your Bibles, open to Ephesians chapter 1. Some things that should never cease in our lives. Some things that should never stop. They're basic and they're important and they need to continue. There's a lot of things that vie for our attention, church. A lot of things. Not all are bad. There's a lot of things that just vie for our attention. You know, demands at work. You know, you, you want to be a good husband. You want to be a good wife. You want to be a good parent. You want to be a good daughter. You want to be a good neighbor. There's so many things that vie for our attention. Good things. But sometimes with all the things that are, that are vying for our attention, sometimes the, some important things kind of get forgotten or left by the wayside. Do you ever have that happen to you where there's something that's just really important to you but because you get so caught up in, in just stuff that you forget it? I did that with a leader once at youth convention. I left them. I left them. I didn't know until we got back to Delaware from Hershey. And all the suitcases were laid out. And I've said this story before. It's just a reminder. You know, there was so much going on. We had four vans and we had 50-something kids and, and we had cars and whatever and so on. And, and we had, you know, it was back in the day before cell phones and we had little radios. And I said, you know, Shh, everybody in the vans, Shh, yes. Great, we pulled out. No one told me she got out. I was so anxious with everything else, I didn't even think. And we get to the church and all the luggage is laid out and all the luggage gets picked up by all the kids. And there's one suitcase sitting on the curb. And I know who it belongs to. And I look at Christy and I go, did you see her since we got back? And Christy goes, I've been kind of busy. I don't think so. And just then a car pulls in the parking lot with her in it. You guys left me. <laughs> Parents going to convention, I will not leave your children. <laughs> Adults, I might leave. Kids, I don't leave. But we get so focused on stuff that sometimes we, we just forget that which is important. And Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, is just a reminder of some things that we need to stay, make sure we're focused on continuing in our lives. So Ephesians 1, starting at verse 15, it says, For this reason, ever since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers, verse 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Three simple verses, three simple things that I'm going to remind you today that we can't stop, that have to be ongoing and continual. See, Paul speaks of being continually thankful for the Ephesians. An attitude of thankfulness like that does a great deal. See, when you're thankful for something, it does a great deal to promote unity and cooperation, doesn't it? When you're grateful for someone, when you're thankful for someone, it changes how you interact with them. And we need to make sure that we always have this attitude of thankfulness. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. But, and Paul doesn't dismiss them as being beneath him. Remember, this is Paul. This is, this is Paul. This is, this is the man. Like, like in, the, in the New Testament, this is the guy. This is the guy who wrote 
at least half, more than half of the New Testament. This is the guy who was planting churches all over the place. This is the guy that had the pedigree beyond pedigrees. And then you've got the, the, these Ephesians, you know, fairly new Christians. You know, who, and Paul says, you know what, I think about you all the time. I love that about it. I, lo- I love that about Paul. Paul could have been like, I'm Paul, you're the Ephesians, I don't have time for you. But Paul says to them, I think about you always. He had an attitude of thankfulness for them. He had an attitude of appreciation for them. And he says, you're not forgotten. Then he talks about, again, those three things we're going to talk about that need to, not, that need to continue, that we can't stop. The first thing that Paul says is, again, is in, in this portion of scripture is there's thanks. And he said, for this reason... Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Now, Paul was talking to a specific group of people, but I'm here to tell you today that as Christians, we need to have a continual spirit of thanks and appreciation for what God has done and what God is doing in our lives. We must choose. Everybody say choose. Choose. Say it again. Choose. Choose. We must choose to never let praise and thanksgiving cease in our lives. Church, it's a choice. It's a choice. And it's a choice, honestly, that often goes counterintuitive counterintuitive to the the mindset of our culture today. We want to complain. We want to gripe. We want to be miserable. We, you know, people, you know, some people have got it down to an art form. Do you know that if you want to complain to a company, there's certain things you do to catch their attention? There's certain things you, you know, in today's culture, you know, before it used to be write a letter. You know, and, and, and make it, put, put it on paper or something that's going to stand out. Nowadays, you don't even need to write a letter. You just tweet at somebody. You got a problem with somebody, literally, instantly, you tweet right at them. Hey, at McDonald's. And you, boom, and they, you know what? They got people watching Twitter. They got people watching social media, and they know like this, that you had a problem, and you know what? Don't be surprised if you hear back from them. We love to complain. Now, listen, if something's wrong, fix it. Get it right. I'm not saying as Christians we need to be doormats and just say, you know, well, if that's what you want to give me, then go ahead. You know, like that time Christy and I went to McDonald's, and she ordered a hamburger, and she got a bun. (laughs) Fully loaded bun. Pickles, onions, ketchup, mayonnaise, wrapped up beautifully in the wrapper, no meat. No meat, no vegetables, no nothing, air. And good Christians that we were, say, well, this must be what Jesus wants us to have. (laughs) No, took that thing back up there and I took it and I, (laughs) I was tired. I think it was after a long trip to the amusement park with the kids. And I took it up there, and I, I just kind of put it on the counter, and I said, tell me what's missing. <laughs> oh, and we got what was due to us. So I'm not talking about just being a doormat in life, but I'm talking about when we, have, we, have, we always have something to rejoice over and to be thankful for, and if nothing else, you can be rejoiced and be thankful for the fact that your sins are forgiven and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that God loves you with an unconditional love. Amen? Amen. We cannot let thankfulness stop coming out of our mouths. Paul started giving thanks for the church at Ephesus the moment he heard about them, it says in Scripture. The moment he heard it, and then he says he did not stop. I give thanks for you always. Listen, I'm going to start with the real, real personal level because you know what? Relationships run two directions. I got to get this right because I messed it up. And last, last time I preached this message, I messed it up bad and I heard about it for years. We got to make sure our relationships are right vertically and horizontally. I preached a whole sermon with them switched. People were confused. I heard about it for years. So we got to make sure that we are being thankful for what's happening in our lives vertically and horizontally. Okay? Because you know what? It's not just God that, 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 that blesses us. God often uses the people around us to bless us. You know, as I look at this church, as I look at the people in this room, you know what? I am thankful for every single one of you. Some of you are like, you don't even know me. I'm still thankful for you. You know why? Because you're here today and we get to worship together and hopefully eventually I'll get to know you better and I'll get to know who you are and, 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 and what your passions are. You know what? I'm just thankful you're here because that means we get to worship God together. 
For those of you that I know a little bit better, you know, some of you have gone, you know, done some small things for us, and some of you have done some big things, and some of you have done nothing. That doesn't change the fact that I'm just thankful because you're a child of God, that you are in God's house today. I am thankful for the people around me, but I'm also thankful for God and what he's done. Let me ask you this. What has God done in your life? Think about that for about two seconds. There's some things to be thankful for. So there's some things to be thankful for. Think about what prayers he has answered in your life. You got some things to be thankful for. Raise your hand if God's ever answered prayer and you say, I got something to be thankful for. Amen. Good. You know what? In a few weeks in April, we're looking to have another celebration Sunday here. And we're going to be looking to be doing some water baptisms and some stuff. We're also going to be having some testimonies. So if you got a testimony you think you'd like to share, again, it can't be 10 minutes long, okay? If you've got a testimony, see me, see Pastor Christy. We want to start getting some stuff together because we want to testify about prayers that God has answered. If you're here today and God has changed the situation in your life, raise your hand. Something to be thankful for. If you're here and God has blessed you, he has provided in some way, shape, or form, raise your hand. you got something to be thankful for. If you're not raising your hand, see me after service. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Because once you know Jesus, you're going to find out that all these things start happening. And then you got stuff to be thankful for. Man, if you're one of those people, if you're here today or you're watching online, you're one of those people that says, those Christians always are happy. I don't know why they're always happy. Because we got so much to be thankful for. Our lives may not be perfect. We get flat tires. Things break, wear down. Our kids don't listen. Our spouses don't listen. You know, guys, here's a good trick. Ladies, cover your, no, I'm just kidding. Here's a good trick, guys. You want your spouse to, you want something you said, you want your spouse to heed it maybe, and maybe give it a little bit more attention. Find a celebrity saying the same thing you did and send them the clip or show them the video. And they'll come back and say, do you know what Dr. Oz just said? Do you know what this one just said? And you quietly, don't, don't, don't be one of those guys who says, I know. Just say, mm-hmm. Because you know it's something you've been saying for weeks, but they just had to hear it from somebody else. But we have so much to be thankful for, regardless of what your situation is right now. Some of you are sitting here right now, and for you, it's Good Friday. It's not Good Friday. It's Friday. Jesus is hanging on a cross, and you're looking up and you're saying, oh, man, this ain't good. For some of you right now, you're, you're, you're sitting here like it's Friday, and Jesus is being crucified. And you're saying, this is terrible. But I'm here to tell you that Sunday came. And Sunday meant that Jesus didn't stay dead, that something great was about to happen, and it did. That's the God that we serve, church. Today may feel like Friday, but Sunday is coming. Don't give up today, because Sunday is coming. Amen? Amen. Parents. Listen to me, parents, regardless of where your kids are today, regardless of what they're doing, regardless of how they're living, remember that once they were the apple of your eye. At one point, they were your most precious thing. And they may have done some things and said some things and acted some ways that have hurt you and broken your heart and grieved you, but understand that God still sees them. Don't stop. Don't stop praying for them. Don't stop loving them. And don't start speaking death over them. The Bible says that children are a blessing. And even if they're not living for the Lord right now, never stop giving thanks for them. There's a lot of parents who spend a lot of birthdays going and visiting their kids at graves and cemeteries. That would gladly trade places with you to have their kids still alive and still have an opportunity and a hope for transformation to take place. Give thanks for them. Give thanks for them. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Luke chapter, 30, chapter 7, verse 36 through 50. And you can read that at your leisure. It gives us a picture of a woman who's so grateful for Jesus that she does not allow pride or public opinion to stop her from expressing her gratitude to him. Luke 7.45 specifically says, This woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. This woman had been forgiven much, and she was thankful for much. And I want to encourage you that if God has done a lot in your life, be vocal. Be, 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 be excited about all that God has done, just like this woman. But the thing I also want to remind you of is don't stop praising God 
or don't just praise God for what he's done. We just got to praise God for who he is. For who he is. For who he is. We have so much to be thankful. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. There was four living creatures that were around the throne, and they worshiped God. And they said, they did not cease to say these, this phrase, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is to come. Church, praise should not just be about our results, but about who God is. See, when we start praising him for who he is, not because of the what, it changes things. It changes things. Then it means, you know what, no matter what's happening, we can praise God. No matter where we're at, we can praise God. No matter what's in front of us or what's, been, what's coming ahead, we can praise God. We need to continually praise God. Don't stop being thankful, church. The second thing Paul says is for them is to pray. He talks about his prayer. He said prayer needs to be, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5.13, this verse is reiterated. It says pray without ceasing. For many of us, this could be the answer to staying out of a lot of trouble. Some of us pray when we're in trouble. We need to pray before we get in trouble. I think it was Wednesday night I shared with you guys, you know, Christy, Christy and I were doing devotions this week, and she, you know, we were talking about prayer and things like that, and, and, and she said something to me, and I'm like, man, that just like hit me right here and right here. And she said, you know what, we've got to stop praying for God to bless our mess. We've got to stop praying for God to bless our mess. We don't seek God. We don't ask God. We don't inquire of God. We don't want to know what God has to say. God, I got this figured out. We go do what we want to do, how we want to do, when we want to do. And then we look back and say, oh, by the way, God, can you help me out here? Can you fix this? Can you change this? I'm kind of painted myself in a corner here, God. Can you get me out of this mess? We've got to come to a place where we're praying without ceasing so that we know what God is saying before we take the first step out the door in the morning, before we take the, make the first decision of the day. God, what it is that you want to do through me, in me, and with me? Stop praying, God, bless my mess. And start praying, God, lead my steps. God, direct me. God, show me the way to go. I'm going to talk right now to everybody in this room right here. If you're not married, if you're single and hoping to be married someday, I'm going to tell you right now. Don't go meet a guy and a girl and then say, hey, God, get him saved. God, fix him. God, change him. God, I, I've already given them my heart. Can you now clean him up for me? No, if you're here today and you've got a notion someday to be married and you're a believer, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, what you do is you get on your knees now and you say, God, I know that you got someone and I know they're going to come my way and I'm not going to settle and I'm not going to be sold out by what they look like because you know what? Looks fade. And unless you marry that special someone with a big pocketbook, plastic surgery may not be an option until they're 75. So you better make sure that the person you're giving your heart to and committing your life to is someone who loves Jesus the way you love Jesus. And stop going after your heart and then saying, God, fix it. And that goes with anything. That goes with anything. We need to, we need to be in prayer to stay out of trouble. If our minds and our lips were more focused on prayer, then we might not be putting our foot in our mouth as much as we do. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? The Holy Spirit probably would have told you if you were connected. Or at least what comes out of our mouth would be more encouraging and edifying. Samuel said this in 1 Samuel 12, 23. He said, God forbid that I should sin in ceasing to pray for you. A lot of times you hear preachers say, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray. And you know what? We need to pray. Samuel takes it to a whole other level. Samuel says here, he says, God forbid that I should sin in ceasing to pray for you. God forbid that I should sin. Why is it a sin? Because James 4, 17 tells us, if anyone then knows the good that they ought to do and do not do it, it is sin for them. If there's something we know we're supposed to do and we don't do it, you know what that's called? Sin. Everybody say, sin. sin. It's sin. And it says, pray without ceasing. So if you're living a life that doesn't include praying constantly, 
daily, regularly. Don't get mad at me. It says there, you know what to do and you don't do it. It's sin. We need to be in prayer. Don't stop praying. And finally, the one last thing that must not cease is proclamation of the gospel. Look around the room on the walls. We've been highlighting missions all month. We've had Teen Challenge here and the, and the ministry they're doing. Last week, we had students from, from Evangel University here and, 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 and them using their gifts. And next week, we've got, you know, Dwayne Danielson and we've got uh, Teen Challenge coming again. We've been highlighting missions. And the reason we've been highlighting this and the reason why this next thing is so important is because there are so many people that have not heard the truth that Jesus Christ is risen and died for their, that he died for their sins and is risen today and is seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for them. We need to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says in Acts chapter 20, verse 31, it says, Daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. How often? Daily. Acts 21, 31 says, By the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Church, we need to be proclaiming the gospel. Now is not the time to stop. Now is not the time to, to, to hunker down and wait for Jesus to come. Now is the time more than ever to get serious about proclamation of the good news. There is a lot of things that we do. Some are more important than others. But they will, will never go wrong or disappointed if we're careful to praise, be thankful. I want to encourage you. Be, be people of praise. Be people of thankfulness. If we pray... And if we proclaim. And you know what? They kind of feed each other. They kind of feed each other. Because when you're, when you're praying, God's going to lead you to people. And when you, listen, there's nothing more exciting than, praying, than, than sharing the gospel with someone and them responding to the good news. And you know what that does? It gets your feet a dancing. It causes you to celebrate. And then you know what you want to do? You want to see that happen again. So you know what you do? You get down on your face again. You say, oh, God, send me another one, God. Send me another one, God. And it just starts this cycle in your life. And if you're here today as a Christian and you said, man, being a Christian is boring. I'm going to say it again because I've said it before. You're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. If your idea of Christianity is 10 to 12 on Sunday, come in. Sit on some chairs left over from the Chinese takeout place because that's what these remind me of. I don't know why. But if your idea of Christianity is walking into church and sitting on a chair for two hours, turning around and leaving until next Sunday, you know what? I'd be bored too. But if your idea of Christianity is seeing the creator of the universe, almighty God, work in you and through you Monday through Sunday and start again on Monday. Well, actually, never stop. If your idea is saying, God, here I am, use me, God's going to, man, God's going to give you opportunities and the likes of which you never imagined. You will never be bored. You will never run out of things to thank God for. You will never run out of things to say, Jesus, you are the best. And you'll never run out of things to pray for. Because as you're meeting people, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pray with someone to come to Jesus. Or you're going to walk away bound and determined to pray for that someone until they come to Jesus. So it's going to keep you connected to the Father. Church, we can't stop thankful, being thankful. We can't stop praising. We can't stop praying, and we can't stop proclaiming. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask Alexa if she'd come on up to the guitar here. You know, as we wrap up this service, we're going to head out to different places. I don't know where you're going after church. Maybe you're going out to lunch. Maybe you're going to meet some family. Maybe you've got whatever other plans are. We're all going to head out there, get in our cars, and go in, in any number of different directions. I'm I want to say this, wherever you go, be ready to proclaim the good news. Be ready to be thankful for all that God has done. And be thankful in, an, in, in a way that, that, that gets people excited about what you're thankful about. I'm serious. Sometimes our thankful is, I don't know what it is, but it's not thankful. I know if I was thankful, sometimes I know me, me. Sometimes the way I show how thankful I am for what God has done, if I'd have done that on Christmas morning with something my parents bought for me, that might be the last Christmas gift I ever got. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful for what God is doing. So Alexa begins to play. Before we leave this place, I want to encourage you. Let's spend some time in praise and praying. 
Because you know what? The proclamation is going to take place out there. The proclamation is going to take place as we walk out these doors and go wherever it is we're going. So let's be ready to go proclaim by spending some time in prayer and praise. So what I'm going to ask you to do right now, we're going to open up these altars, or you can stand where you are. I'm going to say, as Alexa leads us in a chorus here, whatever she wants to do, you know, I I trust her. Let's praise him. And let's pray. If you're here and you have need of prayer for something, we're going to pray for you. I want to ask those, you know, those that we've talked to, uh, Metzger's glad you guys are back. Missed you guys so much from, for being with us. Some of you kept where did they go? Where did they go? Did they leave? Yes, they left the cold, and they're back. But if you would come, and, and, and Tina, and, and, and Lucille, and the Mitchells, and there's a few others, you know, we've talked about being up here. Come on up. We want to pray with people. Come on. I want, you, I want my prayer people to come up here first. Got Valley Forge kids. I want you guys up here first. Why are these people here? Because they're snappy dressers. They are. They're here because you know what? These are people I know know how to pray and want to pray. And so now if you're here today and you got something you want prayer for, I want you to find one of these people. I want you to come to one of these people. I want you to tell them. I want, if you're praying for someone, ask them, what am I praying for? Come on up. Come on up. If I didn't call you out but you're ready to come up and pray for people, we've had other conversations. Come on up. Come on up, Mario. Come on right over here. Look, Lucille's ready to pray. She's ready. She's ready. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, God wants to touch you today. He wants to transform your life. You can come on up and talk to one of these people and say, I want peace. I want joy. I want forgiveness. And I want it today. And I know Jesus is the answer. And they'll pray for you. So church, you got one of two choices right now. You're either getting prayed for or you're praising. So Alexa, step up to the mic. Tim, come on down here. Come on church, let's stand to our feet. We're praying or we're praising. We're praying or we're praising.
church, or even if you don't know the words of the song, let's fill this place with praise. God, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. What are you thankful for this morning, church? What are you thankful for this morning, church? God, I'm thankful for my wife. God, I'm thankful for a godly woman who you brought into my life. God, I'm thankful for my children, Lord God. Oh, God, the Bible, your word says that children are a blessing from the Lord, God. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full. God, thank you for our children, God. God, whether they be, Lord, if they're serving you, God, or, or turn their back on you. God, we pray for our children right now. Draw them. Bring them. Work in them. Work in them, God, that not another day would be lost or wasted, Lord God, but that our children would begin to fulfill their purpose, the purpose for which they were created, Father, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, God, for our church family. Oh, God, thank you for our, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God, who encourage, who pray for, who, li who work together, Lord God, to see, Lord God, the gospel message be going forth, God, and being presented. God, we're so thankful. God, I'm thankful for healing. I'm thankful for healing, God. God, that you've worked in my life and in my children's life. God, you healed sh my shoulder, God. Oh, God, I couldn't even lift it, Lord God. They said surgery, God. And God, you touched me and you healed me, Father. God, I thank you for healing today, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, I thank you that you're alive. You're alive. You're alive. I thank you, Jesus, that you're alive. Oh, the tomb is empty. The grave is empty. The Savior is risen. serve a risen Savior, a good God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voices, church. Just a, just a few more moments. Let's just lift our voices and thank him. What do you have to be thankful for today? God, I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful, God, that I'm delivered. I'm thankful that my sins are forgotten, that as far as the east is from the west, you've removed my sins from me. God, I'm thankful, God, that even though I may not be sure what tomorrow holds, I know who holds tomorrow. God, I'm thankful for everything you're doing and everything you're going to do. God, I'm thankful that my children, Lord God, are, are anointed, Lord God. I'm thankful, God, that my children are called, Father. My children are called, Lord God, to do, Lord God, the work of the ministry. God, I'm thankful for that today. Hallelujah. God, I'm thankful for our students that come from Valley Forge, that come and minister, that are responding to the call on their lives to preach the gospel. Oh, God, guide their steps. God, meet their needs, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 If you're excited about serving a risen Savior, put your hands together and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Now, church, this isn't just a here thing. This isn't just a here thing. It's an every way, it's an every place, everywhere, every time thing. And I'm going to say to our young people, I'm going to say to our young people, and I got some back there, I'm going to tell you this, this is just not an old people thing. This is not an old people thing. 
You can get excited about God now and have a lifelong testimony of the power of God moving and working in your life. God is doing great things. I love Teen Challenge. I love what it does. But you know what? I love that I serve a God that says you don't have to go to Teen Challenge. I love young people that you serve a God that says you don't have to give in to statistics. You can serve God from your youth until you're old and never have to go through a program like that and still have a powerful testimony of God's faithfulness. He's moving, church. I'm excited. I'm excited. You can't tell. I am. I'm excited about what God's doing, what God's going to do. And if you don't want to miss it, then don't miss being here. Don't miss being here. Maybe one of those people your whole life you felt like, man, I always felt like I missed stuff. Like good things happened over there, and I was always over there. I'm telling you, good stuff's happening here. And so you need to be here. Don't, show, don't miss next week when Dwayne's here and come back the week after and somebody says, man, you missed it. Don't be one of those people. Be one of those people that says, I was there when it happened. I was there when it happened because there's good stuff happening, church. Amen? Amen. One more time, let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Lucia, would you close us in prayer this morning? Thank you. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for your people. I thank you for the love that they have for you, Father, because you first loved them, and they heard your voice, and they followed hard after you. So I pray, Father God, that you bless them wherever they go today, and whatever they have to do, Father, that you will be a part of every area in their lives, Father God. I praise and thank you, Father. Go, go in peace, and the mountains will rejoice as you go out with joy. And be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There will be shouts of joy. And all the peace of the word and the Lord will satisfy your hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Praising, praying, and definitely proclaiming. Again, pick up some Easter invites. Grab your Swedish fish on the way out. Have a great afternoon.